Court. Good morning. Today is August 22nd, calling to order the meeting of the Jones Library Buildings and Facilities Committee. Um, we are holding the meeting, I assume, still in accordance with the governor's orders uh, around being able to hold meetings remotely. Um, so I'm going to start with a call of the attendance, say, uh, recognize, be heard, hear and be heard. Sorry, <laughs> switching gears. George. Here. Laura. Here. <laughs> here. <laughs> Alex and I'm here as well. Okay, so um, first item uh, that we have is the motion to approve the minutes of April 25th. Uh, I move to approve the minutes. I second. Okay, any uh, questions, comments, notes on the meeting? No. Okay. Um, so, uh, George, uh, how do you vote to uh, approve the minutes of April 25th? Approve. Second. Right. Yes. Approve. <laughs> and Alex, yes, as well. Okay. Uh, the next item I have is a uh, public comment, and I see that we have four attendees in the audience. So, um, if anyone uh, of our attendees would like to comment, um, now would be a great time. You can raise your virtual hand and we will invite you into the meeting. Okay, not seeing any, I will move to the next item. Um, so the next item is the delivery van update, which I assume probably sounds very similar to past updates, but maybe not. I have an update. Woohoo! Um, they have provided me with a VIN number that van is being built. And the projected delivery is sometime in sometime in September. Uh, having not purchased a town vehicle before, I don't know how long the process will take once the van is available. Um, obviously, we we already have the the contract and PO all set and ready to go. Uh, once we get the van, we will be able to install. Uh, the charging system for the van. I'm going to have it done in the shed because uh, should the construction project go forward, the shed is going to remain and I'll be charging it there until I can't access it anymore. And then I'll come up with an alternative, but yay, good news. The van is actually real and it's only taken a year and a half and we will hopefully have it within a couple months. Great. Thank you. Great. I'm Sure, everyone is delighted to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, the next item we have is the North Amherst Library Building Project Update, which I think in our trustee meeting, you gave an update on that. Sharon, I don't know if it's this is different from what was relayed in the trustee I'm not, meeting. I'm not sure, but um, so, the last open day will be on September 2nd in, in the Mill District. And then it's uh, Labor Day weekend. So that, that next Tuesday, that's when staff will put everything in boxes. Um, and then the DPW will be moving all of the books and the furniture, uh, computers, Wednesday the 6th. And, then, and they'll move it back into the 8 Montague Road, you know, the original North Amherst Library building location. Um, and then we'll take about a month. Um, we, we've just been estimating in order to organize. We still need some furniture. We still need circulation desks for the space. Um so, so it'll take time. And, and I've spoken with Paul and I, you know, I said, we'd love to be included on the date of the, the grand reopening so that, so that folks can be there in attendance. So that'll be sometime in October. Uh, DPW is still working on the site. There are still some things to be finalized. So um, that, that's, that's as much of an update as I can give right now. Okay. Any Questions, comments? Um, I would just only add that I was included on an email thread that uh, they're going to be setting up a date for us to do a walkthrough of the building just to familiarize ourselves with things, but they haven't set that date yet. Okay. Great. Um, 
So Sharon, the, the difference between um, September 6th when DPW moves all the things in and the October opening the month, is that because we're still waiting on furniture? Or is that because I, I've never tried to set up a library before? Like, is that just how long it takes to get everything where it goes? Or like, why, why is there a delay of uh, certainly yeah. to be able to so because we need to pack and get out of the mill district uh you know cinda wanted us to move out as as quickly as possible so that she could rent out or at least the space uh so we said okay we're going to do it which means the stuff when we put them in boxes it's not going to be it's not going to be pretty it's just going to be thrown in thrown into boxes and we're going to get out um that way we so it'll take a little time to unpack when when we get back there and um you know sta staffing staff will be doing it and staff are a little limited um but also the furniture and then this will give um we wanted to give wiggle room for the the reopening celebration to be set um and and i i the stuff that dpw is working on i i want to say the gas station building still hasn't been taken down and the paving still has to be done. So there's still big stuff. And we just wanted to make sure there was time for the big stuff to happen because we didn't want to schedule something and then say, oh, no, we lied and, you know, try and reschedule. So hopefully this is the schedule we'll be able to stick to. OK, so it sounds like it's a generous schedule because there's moving parts that some of which are outside of our control and trying to give DPW enough time yeah. for. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Georgia, do you want to respond first or should Farah ask her question first? Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that that it's also important to remember that the layout of Montague Road is different now. So plus that compiled with the fact that the branch librarian wasn't hired until Montague Road was closed, uh, this will give them the opportunity to determine what layout is going to work best as far as what collections go where, because some shelves, as we know, were taken out uh, to help with the ADA compliance, um, and there's a completely different answer. And so that's going to take them some time to determine what the layout's going to be that's most efficient. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess my question is related to that. But what is going? What happened to the old furniture? Is this because of ADA compliance that we need different furniture or? The space got smaller. Yeah, uh, because of the ADA compliance. Um, so it, like the desk that was there before just isn't going to fit anymore. Okay. The existing desk also wasn't ADA compliant. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for reaching out to the town manager. Again, you know, the sooner the trustees could know the date, put it on our calendar so that we could attend. Um, all of us would certainly be appreciative of that. Okay, uh, next update is the branch MOU. And so this is the memorandum of understanding because the uh, North and South Amherst libraries have always been buildings owned by the town, but which library services are provided in. And there seemed to be a considerable confusion over the years about who, who owned the buildings and how that worked. And so this uh, was an effort between town and the library to have something that made it clear um, sort of the relationship relative to the buildings and the library and who does what or how much, so. Yeah, the, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, so I've been working with, with Sean and Paul for several months now, uh, putting together a memorandum uh, of understanding and uh, a, a f uh, an annual fee that we'll pay for use of both spaces, um, you know, in return for they'll give us the space and they will take care of, you know, both of the buildings. And um, so we're in the we're in the home stretch. We almost have an agreement um, and uh, I will share it with everybody once it's uh, signed. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. George, monthly grounds report. This should be fun. Has anything happened? Oh, wait, wait, sorry, Farah. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump oh. on you there. Sorry. Go ahead, please. Just wondering if if things are going to be slowed down now that Sean's not there, Sharon. Or well, all all I know is that Jen LaFountain is going to take his place on the building committee. Okay. Um for more behind the scenes kind of stuff, but that that's all I know. Okay. They they do they do have a crackerjack. Uh, team. So, um, yeah, th that's all I can say. Okay, thanks. 
Has he is has he had his last day yet? No, it's the thirty first. Okay, that's what oh, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so in terms of at least the MOU, I assume we'll have this done before he's yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, George. Uh, buildings and grounds, right? Buildings and grounds. Uh, yeah. Going so, on. So so as as we all know, uh, several weeks ago, uh, during one of the heavy heavy down pours that we had uh there was a flooding issue with the atrium um and other factors contributed to the urgency of the issue but i want to commend my staff for working kind of around the clock since the issue happened in order to get this building open and within three days of the incident itself um unfortunately we are no strangers to drying out a building if it gets wet um, we deal with this all the time. Um, so fortunately we were able to get all the carpets dry, get all of the wet ceiling tiles out. Uh, we did exploratory holes in the walls to make sure that there was no moisture trapped in the walls. Um, and after going through the building with both the fire department and the building inspector, uh, they definitely gave us a clean bill of health to reopen. Um, the sprinkler pipe that burst during that episode was patched uh, and they will be doing a more permanent replacement probably within the month. Uh, the department there is backed up with a lot of work going on at UMass, but uh, they were they were confident that their patch was certainly good enough for us to be open safely. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at with that. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Bar, do you have any questions? You're, you're muted. <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you to you and your staff, George. I mean, okay. that sounded like a real nightmare. It was. This was probably on par with, you know, the special collections flood episodes. This this was a big right. one. The the fact that the sprinkler pipe burst uh just made for a pretty awful situation but again i commend my guys for getting the place back together and the town departments for working with us to get the place open as quickly as possible I, we certainly didn't expect that we would be able to open it within a few days so we're, we're very thankful mm -hmm. we were um so george i have a couple of questions and this probably mm -hmm. <laughs> flows into the next section the backup building um project planning but so yeah. i know on the list of uh sort of urgent repairs that you had put together back in 2017 um i know that your number one priority back in 2017 was replacing the fire alert system yeah. number two was renovating the sprinkler system number three was renovating replacing the glass atrium and number four right was hvac right. um and uh, you know there have been so many conversations about hvac because hvac has been taking the lead i guess so do we have, and I know in the repair B that town has been working on, I believe all the focus has been on HVAC and roof and not on the sprinkler systems and, you know, the things that were previously identified as our largest, our biggest priorities, quite frankly. Um, yeah. So will this patch or will this replacement pipe, like, is another pipe going to burst at some point? We don't know. Like, is this going to get us out for a year? Do we like? Where does this put us in terms of what what in twenty seventeen were your top three priorities? I wish I could predict it. Uh, unfortunately, you know they we we do all of the state inspections on our sprinkler systems and piping. Uh, everybody knows the age of this system. Um, it's not to say that this would not happen again somewhere. I mean, all the pipes are of the same age. And with a dry system, once once water has been in there, which it does during testing, you end up with these pockets of water. And over the years, things just start to rot. And that's what happened in this situation. It was an elbow. And over the years, it just rotted to the point where it was a weak spot. So this could happen again if the system is charged. Uh, it's kind of hard to prioritize when you have similar things, which 
both also both also tie into safety um they're all the same age they're all having the same issues we just had another hvac issue that i'm getting pricing for um that we lost ac in part of the building because the control module died um right now we're operating it operating it on manual so that the building has air conditioning but eventually that's going to have to be looked at as well so it's kind of hard to prioritize those things because they're i feel that they're equally important um and i i hope that the town understands that you know we're we're kind of bound by the financial part of it if we can only afford to do one thing what's it going to be um it's it's a tough one i wish i could answer that question so when you so um so basically when the when the system charges i think that's mm -hmm. what you said um so when they do the inspection every year i assume that's what you do do you, i don't know <laughs> Well, they check, they, system. What they do is they they <laughs> quarterly test the backflow system, which is the seals and what what keeps the water from filling the pipes. Uh, that that's tested quarterly. Uh, both the town and our contractor test them. Um, and every I believe it's every five years. It's either, either three or five years. Uh, they actually do an exploratory where they pull a pipe and they look inside to see if there's any sediment. Uh, or corrosion or something like that. And they just, they pick a section in the lower part of the building uh, and do that. And are we due for that anytime soon or did this burst pipe count as far? It, actually, the, the the last time it was done was last year and it was a pipe okay. near the one that burst, but it wasn't the one that burst that they tested. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'd, I'd also and like I think to I'd also yeah, like ahead, to please. add, because um, I know that there was there was some concern that the roof drains weren't getting cleared often enough. And I'd say that my staff clears those drains. They check them easily weekly uh, just because we know it's an issue, especially in the fall. Once the leaves start falling, the, the drains constantly get clogged uh, and, and we take care of it. Um, but I will add that when we went when I brought the building inspector through the building uh, to make sure that we could reopen, I brought him out onto the roof so he could, you know, he'd never been on the roof before. So his first comment was that it wasn't designed with enough drainage, that there isn't enough drainage in, on the roof for all the different pitches and angles and everything. And I said, yeah, that's that's the truth. And it's it's a design issue along with everything else. So, I mean, it's just, more reinforcement that you know we're not crazy that there's actual real issues with the way that this building is designed that is not helping the situation with keeping water out of the building oh i, I want to echo my i that's it's unfortunate if there are people um who are denigrating your staff who are incredibly hardworking people who do really really phenomenal work in the building and deserve nothing but the gratitude of this town um and so truly i mean i think that you know you have a great staff and i that that's unfortunate it makes me sad to hear that people are um, yeah. blaming blaming hard-working people um yeah that's unfortunate okay sorry so anyway <laughs> um all right so uh and so the, so then we'll get the sprinkler so we'll have that bit replaced okay so yep. and then you just said there's another hvac control module that died and so we're getting a quote to replace that module yes can we even get those modules? i know some parts you can't get like is that that's a gettable part it's well it's something that's going to have to be designed because it's mixing new technology with old technology so uh it's something that will probably have to be specced and designed for that particular purpose. Uh, so that will take time. But right now it is operating on manual. Uh, it's not greatly affecting energy costs. Uh, what this unit does is it speeds up and slows down the circulation fans uh, to its needs. So right now it's just running on high speed all the time, which isn't the most efficient thing, but we have AC in the building, so.
it's it's kind of like that it's the it was the easiest option just to have it running full time until we could get a replacement quoted when when do we when do we remind me when we flip to heat i mean i know it obviously depends on the weather the end of september change, who knows yeah, yeah the okay. the end of september early october and this this module would affect heating as well that so was it, it's something that okay. if, yeah when we switch to heating system we we will need that to be operational as well okay and is it something that you can continue to operate i mean manually if Needed during heating season during yeah. heating season yeah. okay yeah okay and so i know when we um the last couple of years um for joint capital planning committee when we've been talking about um you know the building needs where obviously jcpc is where these costs are paid out of and we had asked for sort of you know an emergency fund and town had said you know we'd rather you handle it on you know an emergency basis rather than giving you a fund although Good, good news is next year for JCPC that we'll we'll have a fund like the school and everybody else, um, which is one thing that we should be, I don't know how much say we're going to have in that, but I think um, just so you know, George, that was one of the things that JCPC recommended this year was that we have like every other town department, you know, a fund. That's um, so will we, so we're just going to go to town for once we get the quote for this and then have that. Yeah, I'll, t I'll talk to Sharon. Or, I'll talk to Sharon when the quote comes in okay. um, and we'll see where it's at. I, I can't venture a guess to how much it's going to be. Uh, yeah. It could be less than the threshold for a JCPC request, or it could be right. more. So okay. once I have that figure, I'll talk to Sharon and we'll decide where we're going to okay. try to get it paid out of. Great. Okay. Any other updates on the building? Nope, not at this time. You know, this will go into the next, into the next topic, but, um, okay. Going into the next topic, sorry. So if the building project doesn't move forward, you've hit the nail on the head, Alex, all of these things have to be taken care of. The, the town is going to have to do HVAC, do the roof, do the, the fire system, the, you know, the panel and the pipes along with the carpeting and the hazmat r removal and on and on and on and on. So um, I guess period. <laughs> That's, all of that needs to be taken care of, period. So, so we're, we're, so last, so we've since basically what, November, October, given the town everything they need, um, for the repair B option. And as I understand it, we're waiting on town. I think the last update we had is that they, we need an engineer to design um, any system that we have. And so we're waiting on town to put together a scope um, mm -hmm. for an engineer. And so I guess we're, does, does the town need anything from us? Like, is there anything we, uh, are they waiting on us for anything or where, where do things stand? No, they're not waiting for us. Um, they, uh, yeah, they would need, their plan is to hire an engineer uh, to do a feasibility study. They expect that the work will be over one and a half million dollars, which means there has to be an OPM hired as, as part of this project, um, this plan B project. And that that's that's all the information I have. Okay. And then have we confirmed with town? Because I know one of the things we talked about um, in a, a board meeting, maybe it was back in May, was there were the new, um, the ECAC uh, had new requirements around sustainability. And so I guess, have we confirmed if our project, if, if there's a repair B option, will it follow those guidelines? Or Yes. Yes. Jeremiah okay. did, did say that. Yes. Okay. Which I imagine. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, far, yeah. So um, I might have asked this before, but also I know that some of it is JCPC funds. But Sharon, at the end of the day, a, a lot of this, any kind of repair, any kind of plan B is going to be 
funded by the town, right? So what we have in place now is the trustees will pay for the first 1.5, 1. 1.8, 1. sorry, 1.8. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the town will will take up the rest through the JCPC process. So I would envision that it would, you know, we would lay out our five-year plan and we would say, you know, like what y'all were just discussing now, we need to add the fire panel system, you know, to that list after or before HVAC, I don't know. Um, I, I would assume the engineer would decide which which things need to happen ASAP. And then over time, year after year after year, JCPC will approve what they approve and then those items will get taken care of piecemeal. So And so that also means that nothing is gonna happen overnight. It's going to be a few years. We lose all the funding we have from the state, from any of these grants, any of this uh, fundraising through the capital campaign. So it just seems like it seems really frustrating, right? So if this project doesn't go through, plan B, we're not going to have any money for plan B. The library is going to be in the situation for the next few years. So it just seems like the smart thing is to go ahead with the project at this point. It, it would be in spite fiscal. of all the loud voices saying no, and that is going to just like look at the schools. It's costing us so much more to build these schools and our kids. Well, my kid is not uh, being able to take advantage of that. So many of our kids have not been able to take advantage of that building. It's just I'm just expressing my frustration because it seems like you guys are working so hard all the time and this. The situation is really frustrating and not fair to the town, to the kids, to the community. It would be fiscally irresponsible to yeah. not move forward with this project. Yeah. It, it just flat out irresponsibility. Yeah. Thank you for all you're doing, Sharon and George. I can't even imagine working under these circumstances. So many people, so many people. And and it, it's not just... Um, it's not just working under the conditions. It's, it, it's it, going back to the discussion that George was just having, you know, when the, the fire inspector and the building inspector got on top of the roof and, you know, their eyes are like saucers. Like, I can't believe this is, this is, you know, the way this was designed. It's crazy. And, and that's the way every time an expert digs even a little bit into the craziness of this building you know they're like wow yeah this is crazy so it's you know constant validation by the experts what gets frustrating is when um people who are constantly questioning the experts even though that that list of experts is very very long so again it it goes back to the fiscal irresponsibility and constantly blaming you for many things yeah uh, there's but a there's, Far for the course, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. There's an emotional toll to this, and it's frustrating. You know, Sharon and I have been working for municipalities for quite a long time, um, and you know, when you're faced with this day in and day out, it's 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 very frustrating, and it does take a toll. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So, George, the list that you put together in 2017, which had, I think, 12 items on it, and that mm -hmm. was the basis of the Western Builders estimate that we got as requested by Town Council and by JCPC. Um, so is that a list that we, is, is anything new need to be added to that list? Do we, I mean, I, I know... I guess I just want to make sure that this is a list that we're constantly looking at and that we are constantly pri reprioritizing, right? Because yeah. I arguably five months ago, HVAC was bumped to the top of the list, right? And I, it may still be number one, I don't know, but I think it's really important for the repair B option that we keep this list of priorities in front of the group, you know, in town, in front of, you know, Jeremiah and Rob and, you know, whoever else is on the group in front of them, because I, I worry about um, people, I worry about the monofocus of the HVAC system, because that's the thing that sort of has been breaking down 
that 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 is most noticeable to people. Um, and so I, I just want to make sure that you know one of the things that's talked about in the MOU is building a schedule um, for things. And so I know when we went to Western Builders that when you're doing one thing, you know, they had broken it into pieces for us because if you're doing one thing, then it makes sense to do the others. And so I don't know whether Rob and Jeremiah, do they have this? They have this list. We get, I mean, we gave them this, we gave them the Western Builders. Yeah. So I'm assuming we won't really know until we hear back from the engineer. Like I, I just, I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, when, when we, when we went to Western Builders, you know, we didn't just have HVAC and roof because it made sense to put other things in that bucket because like, you know, if you've got something open, the most efficient thing to do is to fix the other things. And so I, I guess I just, as, as, as town is putting together the scope and sequence, I just, I don't want to lose that these things also need to be addressed. Um, I, I don't know, maybe, I mean, maybe the town's plan is, I, I, I just, no, we can uh, definitely, <laughs> you know, George can look at that list and, you know, less than five minutes reprioritize update. Um, and I can bring it uh, to uh, Jeremiah and Rob and Paul and say, you know, listen, in light of, you know, this was written in 2017 and now it's 2024 almost. It's just, well, you know, to keep in mind, everybody needs to keep in mind this list. These are the things that need to get taken care of. Yeah. And, well, and, and splitting splitting them up into phases was both a financial decision and a means to avoid kicking in ADA requirements and the reality time, is yeah. you know I, I don't, i'm certainly not you know i think i think we and the town need to keep in mind that if an engineer comes in here they they may recommend a path that can't avoid kicking in that ADA requirement. If they say this all needs to be dealt with ASAP, you know, it's just going to, it's just going to cost more. It's, it's going to keep costing more and you're not going to get any programming changes. You're not going to get any redesign changes. You're not going to get any more space. And it, the costs are just going to keep coming up. So does it make sense? I, I don't, and if it doesn't make sense, say something, because the last thing I want to do is create more work for you. But does it make sense? And again, this is where, you know, I'm not an expert, but Jeremiah and Rob, obviously, this is what they do. You know, I mean, to the extent that we have an item, right, like replace glass atrium roof, redesign rubber membrane, you know, like, so we, like, we have replaced, we have repaired, we have done things already, but then you know, like the frequency with it, with which we're having a problem, like every time it rains or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, does, like, do we need to be giving more detail about either frequency or additional deterioration or like, is that, or, I mean, I know that you walked the building with them. So in theory, they have that, right. but we walked, I think you walked the building with them in November. So I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how to, keep the the actual real issues front and center but also you know i think what gets lost is you know we're, we're constantly talking about you know the hvac being a problem but not necessarily people realizing that you know you inspect the building daily and every day you're right like there's constant repair there's constant and 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 so i i guess yeah i just want to make sure that that when they're putting together the scope for the engineer they have the most complete information and current information in front of them. Um, yeah. yeah, I and and I I honestly think they do because we've been nonstop in communicating to them, you know what the needs are. Um, okay. Like I said, they've they've walked through the building not all that long ago. Um, you know, I I don't know what more we could do to plead our case. Uh, I just hope that w when their part of the planning moves forward that we're ensured that we have a seat at the table so that we can keep saying what we've been saying all along and that we can advocate for what is most important. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't doubt that we'll have a seat at the table. I think absolutely they value George's um, expertise. Uh, I definitely, I, I definitely feel we're a partner in this. Um, I and I think what town staff are doing is based on the higher ups. And I, until the higher ups make a decision, um, I, I don't see town staff moving forward on anything. Um, and it's it's not their fault. It just is what it is. Don't you hate that phrase? So um, on a separate but related note, I just I met with um, uh, some folks from the Friends Development Committee yesterday and was really amazed. I have to say when we as trustees had to make the vote whether to go forward when we got the revised estimate that that was an incredibly difficult decision and not one um, made lightly. And for me as the chair of buildings and facilities, um, what weighed on me most was knowing, I think at a level that sometimes, you know, if you're not in this committee listening to George all the time, like knowing knowing the state of the building and worrying that, that, um, that the library would sort of fall way down the list. Like if we don't move forward, we would fall way down the list. And I was really concerned about our ability to stay open, to stay safe to the public and and you know, the decline generally in this in in the building. Um, and so that decision to move forward um, was a leap of faith. And you know, I found out yesterday that like we've they're they're up to 37.5 million dollars. Yeah. And that's six million dollars away from, you know, 43 million, which I, like I, I mean, whew. <laughs> like that's really, really phenomenal. I would have never, you know, I hoped, um, but I, I, that was, it's one of those uh, moments where it makes me feel good about the decision that we made. And yeah. I feel like six million dollars over the next, what, four years. Yeah. Um, seems like a really attainable goal. And that doesn't even include the historic tax credits. I mean, that's just money aside. So, I mean, if we assume the historic tax credits, you know, it's so I just kudos to the, to the, to that group. Um, really just, wow. Yeah. I can't say enough. So, um, thank you, George, for everything and for everything you, <laughs> your group does. I really appreciate it. So, um, so I Think, unless you have anything else on backup building project planning. Um, okay, so um, I do see that we have um, some additional attendees. So I'm just gonna open it back up if they're for public comment again. Um, if anyone wants to come into the meeting or make a public comment, we always welcome. And I see Bob Pam has his hand up, so. Hi, Bob. Hello. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, just on the North Amherst Library, uh, uh -huh. if the move occurs, my guess is that DPW is going to want to move it into the, the community room rather than bring everything up in an elevator or, you know, uh, bring it up and then have it all in the space. So just think about how that's going to be organized. Um, the furniture probably goes upstairs, but the books will stay down. Just just think about where you want to move things so that they can be put away reasonably quickly. Great. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, our, our branch head over there is definitely definitely having those thoughts for sure. But yeah, okay, thank you. Second question. Uh, yep. So, um, turns out that seems that rains seem to come in larger quantities than they used to. Um, and so I just want to make sure that as drainage plans are created under a new building uh, that that has effects on the size of the drainage pipes, the the, the size of the swale, the, you know, the capacity of each of those things. Um, it may or may not have been in their thoughts a year ago, but it probably ought to be for this year and for the next 10 years and 20 years. So um, just suggesting that as a thought that might be worthwhile. Um, third has to do with uh, the uh, plan B and you know people who have had concerns about 
uh, the ability to move forward with Plan A are not evil people. And I just want to make sure that that is not the, the impression people get from hearing the, the discussions that go on in either the board or uh, any other uh, discussions that go on. That is that is not an accurate way of thinking about uh, people who say that, that the plan is either too large, too expensive, or will have effects on other projects that the town is concerned about. Yeah, I don't think, Bob, anyone's ever referred to people who disagree with plans as evil people. I don't think there's a single person in here who would, who would, who would think that. I think... I think I, I, I think we all welcome people to the table. I think that uh, conversations with people who think differently are what make plans better. Um, last thing I ever want to do is be in a room full of people who all think the way I do. That would be terribly boring, and you wouldn't get much done in life. So, um, but yes, thank you for clarifying that. It's definitely not how anyone at the library feels about uh, people who have different ideas to the library. Absolutely not. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay. I don't see any other hands raised. So um, there are no topics not anticipated by me. So with that, unless anybody else has anything else they wanna add. Great, thank you. I'm uh, calling the meeting adjourned. Take care. Thank you, bye.